Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here in Las Vegas for Avis reInvent. Day three of four days of coverage, it's going to be brutal. It's the <laughs> biggest event of the year for theCUBE, uh, and probably our largest event, 11 years covering Avis reInvent has been quite the journey. This year, it's a major transformation of Gen of AI and the conversation about data, how that's impacting the keynotes going on right now. It's finishing up, Swami will be on tomorrow at four o'clock here on theCUBE. And I've got two great guests here who are going to unpack this. We've been on theCUBE before. Really it's about data, data flow, and orchestration, data science, and how those platforms are going to emerge. We've got Andy and Steven here from Stromer. Thanks for coming on, good to see you again. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. So let's get into the data conversation. First, take a minute to explain Stromer real quick for the folks who haven't seen the videos up before uh, who are watching now. Yeah, in brief, we're the commercial developer behind open source Airflow. Probably most of your listeners will have heard of Airflow. It's created by Airbnb for managing complex data pipelines. We've just taken that and made that enterprise grade. Uh, we make a lot of the contributions to the Airflow project and have a cloud service that deploys that. And Steve, you just joined as CEO. I did, I mean, Andy, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did, I did, yeah. So I joined uh, about five months ago, um, and one of the things that got me really excited about this opportunity was <clears throat> the amount of data that's being passed through workloads to application to application is growing on a daily basis. And when you look at the modern data stack, um, there's only one standard right now to be able to make that happen, which is through Airflow. And as Steven mentioned, that's an open source project that we're the primary contributors towards. And we also make our commercial product that has a lot of higher value add um, feature sets above the Airflow product itself. And those feature sets are front and center with delivering, helping companies deliver on AI and ML um, initiatives today. What's interesting about the open source conversation here at reInvent, we just saw Perplexity on stage there. They took all the open source models they trained and now making that available. It's the open versus closed conversation. And, and it's interesting, some of the big large language models are actually not open, the source. So open source has been a big driver. Um, and it's been around for a while, Airflow, Airbnb uh, was the pioneer behind that. But right now the data pipeline conversation is about scale and how it's going to be adaptable, right? So if GenAI comes in, what data is available? So the, the, we've been asking the question, is, what's the problem statement right now? Is it scale, is it the pipelines? Uh, is, are people struggling with even figuring out what should I do for my pipelines? Are they going to change, should they be static? What's this current state of the problem? I think there's lots of challenges, but in a way, the one problem there is, is the model. The models are great, right? But it's how you bring the yeah, data yeah. to the models, because there's so many different data sources, whether you're an actual LLM provider, or you're just trying to use LLMs in your conversational assistance or in your content creation, you've got to bring in a lot of data and process that, and so it reduces, in a way, to a data engineering problem, which I, is a reason, I think, why Airflow is still being yeah. widely used for these sort of ML pipelines. It's interesting, the, uh, Andy, the conversation with platform engineering has kind of become kind of the, the, the broad SRE, DevOps person, now they're doing platform engineering at, at KubeCon, that was the big conversation, but data is the same problem. It's scale, data engineering is a term that's being used. It's not about databases anymore, it's about architecting data. That's data right. flows and orchestrating them, explainability is a big part of it, observability of the data. Now developers are going to have, have guardrails now for developers who are shifting left with data. I think we talked about that in our, our last interview. How's that shaping up from an industry standpoint? How do you see this evolving? Are customers like on point on this or is it still in kind of the platform kind of groups? I think it's still in the platform groups, John. I think the companies that we do business with, which are hundreds around the world, um, and the thousands of other companies that we're talking to, they're trying to figure out how to structure and organize their infrastructure in their organizations mm -hmm. to best take advantage of this massive amount of data that can build you know, tons of value mm -hmm. into their organization. So, Today, you know, when we look at what Astronomer does and what Airflow does, really it does three things on top of allow the data engineer to have access to you know, delivering and building pipelines. One is it allows companies to centralize uh, more of their work and collaboration between software engineering, data engineering, and ML ops, which is a big challenge today. And that centralization in itself, we see more and more companies wanting to, to achieve. The second is the security and governance around 
on that. So when we look at organizations today, just think being the CIO of a large Fortune 500 company, there's data engineers, ML engineers, and software engineers all developing in silos, and it's scary because the governance and security around that information is not is not high, typically, either. And Astronomer and Airflow allows companies to bring not only a centralized env environment, but a highly governed and secure environment as well. And from there, you know, we're going to allow people to add more value to the business through their different development efforts efforts through that centralization and governance that we're bringing to the table. Yeah, so you guys bring some reliability, kind of stability to a foundational playbook they can build on top of. We do, we do, and we do it in a modern in a modern data stack as well. So, you know, one of the things that we spent a lot of time on, Stephen has with uh, with our um, AI team and our company is, how do we continue to innovate to allow data engineers yeah access to information where they can build ML applications, language models, and add value back into their organization. And the integrations that we just released recently is an example, yesterday actually, is an example of some of those high value um, feature sets that we're delivering to the open source community, which we fully believe in, yeah. is the standard that organizations should go towards. Yeah. And then also our, our software product itself. Yeah, what's interesting is that when I see the Bedrock uh, announcements yesterday, it's clear the choice is a great strategy. Cho choice and open always win, in my, my opinion. And that means developers are going to start getting jamming some apps out there with the MLMs. Yep. So that mm -hmm. means the data infrastructure's got to get mm -hmm. cleaned up. Mm -hmm. um, what's the problem statement for your customers? Walk me through an example, because this is, again, it's, you're in the plot engineering side of the data, which sits on the infrastructure, and then that next layer up, so you're in that, you're feeding the AI mm -hmm. apps, basically, in my opinion. Well, that's, a, that's my take, what's your? It's interesting, but before you said, in terms of the problem statement, you said it's, it's not about databases anymore. I think it is still about databases, yeah. but it's also about a million other things yeah. as well, right? <laughs> um, you've seen the the yeah. sort of reoccurrence and sort of reappraisal of vector databases being very commonly used right now. But then you've also got traditional databases yeah. and you've got streaming data sets and you've got cloud machine learning platforms. How do you bring all of those things together? That's really the problem, I think. It's like, we joke sometimes that the most common word or phrase we hear is the Wild West, right? <laughs> when we look at the data science teams, even yeah. the data engineering teams, everybody's doing their own thing. So being able to orchestrate those together and bring them together on a common platform um, is an imperative because mm -hmm. then you can start being more inventive and more creative, but until yeah. you've got control of those pipelines, then you're kind of on shaky ground. So you're saying then the problem statement is not so much, it's more about the complexity of the of the, of the environment. Because environment, yeah. you have multiple databases, now we're hearing it's not one LLM that will rule the world. I'll, That's I right. get that, I agree. Yeah. So you got all the stuff out there, but it's got to be pulled together. That's right. Okay, from a data perspective. And, and if you have the wrong data going to the wrong place, you're just scaling bad data. It's, it's mean, already true, right, with traditional machine learning models that you need to be pretty damn sure that this prediction was backed up by data that you can reproduce and have transparency into. With large language models, which are often very much non-deterministic, that ability to see the lineage, how you got to yeah. that result is even more important. That's a big point, that deterministic versus non is a huge factor. Yes, that changes right. everything. Take us through a customer example of uh, how you guys engage yeah. Um, who you talk to, who's the buyer, who's the user, and how that evolves. I mean, are they re, are they reconsolidating their data? Is it a is it a reset? Is it refactoring? Is it just adding more to the infrastructure? What's the What's the environment look like? Take us through an example. Yeah, sure. And I think you know, Steve, obviously, let's uh, let's tag team on this. Yeah. So, I think typically what happens is that a data engineer goes to the Airflow open source product and starts to use that product and becomes viral within within an organization. At that point, um, we call that a line of business. A line of business usually starts to look and say, well, there's this Airflow uh, set of pipelines out there. How do we start to bring this together where you know, we can have more visibility, more security, and more fidelity around the data that's being delivered into applications that are running our business, frankly. Whether it's a supply chain application, or retail application, or regulatory applications, or ML or AI applications. So, that's when we start to engage because these organizations want higher level feature sets that can yeah. guarantee that, that the data that's being delivered and powering their business is going to make, yeah. it's going to be accurate data, it's going to have SLAs, it's going to have you know, more governance around it and there's going to be more security around it and it's going to be centralized. That's another big area, that I know I mentioned that before, yeah. but that centralization yeah. and collaboration of more teams using Airflow as their central nervous system delivering this data yeah. to not just 
line of business as it grows, but their entire company. That's typically our engagement model. And where we see um, companies getting higher and higher value out of our product, it's when they start to deploy larger and larger data sets, and they start to take advantage of the features that we're delivering on those data sets. Uh, my favorite example, I think, is the is the Texas Rangers. I think that's a sports team. Yes. Um, I yeah, I think they they've did been on quite, the cube. They, they're cube alumni too. They've been on the cube. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think they've been doing pretty well lately. And <laughs> yeah. actually, a lot of their success, yeah. I think we can justifiably claim, <laughs> is driven through Airflow actually, yeah. and yeah. through yeah. the Astro platform that's running it for them. They're getting data off the field. They're getting data, medical data. I they mean, they're definitely playing the analytics game. That was well, right. that was obvious yeah. during the World Series. That was fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my other favorite is um, is the firm Laurel that uses generative AI models to summarize the work that lawyers do and accountants do and other professional services do. Um, again, using data that they gather yeah. pretty much in real time from what you're doing on your laptops to summarize the work that you're doing. I mean, it just completely streamlines the work that people have yeah. to do. It's exactly the right application of these models. I mean, I appreciate it, Andy. I appreciate that description too, because that's what I was trying to get to, is that you're talking about engineer. You mentioned data engineering. I think that's the key word. There's real engineering going on around yeah. the data. It's not like I need to have a data strategy. It's like no, someone wants to get the tool, they jump into open source, the, essentially tire kicking was That's right. put their version of open mm, source. Mm. And they go, oh, this, this is going to work great. And then they start playing with it. Then they go, okay, this is legit. Let's go to the next level. So it's incremental sounds like what you're getting to, right? It is. Come in. It is, and like, so that nice onboarding is for that data engineer, yeah. right? And that is what that Airflow product is, is really, really meant for. And as it starts to yeah. grow and grow and grow, and as, frankly, these yeah. companies start to use um, Airflow to start to generate more data and deliver it into these big data sets mm -hmm. and ML and AI applications, it starts to become a line of business. Yeah. And in that line of business, we're empowering more and more engineers to get the job done. Yeah. Um, or in, and deliver more business value. And at that point, that's where we're starting to see more executives start to pay attention to what's yeah. going on with this Airflow thing. Can we get higher feature sets, higher value out of Airflow? And I mean, you start to see yeah. Airflow sprouting up in organizations. I mean, like the world's largest <laughs> retailer probably has like 500 that's separate right. teams running on like a thousand Airflow deployments. Um, so you've got to bring yeah. some control to that. You know, I, I just love, a little smile, because I, I just love to see the success of how end users are contributing mm. their stuff to that's open source. Right. Mm. Uber did it, Air, mm. Airbnb does it, um, Intuit did it, um, a lot of it. And that's awesome. I mean, that means I mean, open source is one. It's like it's now it's the software industry. So it's a great example. But the other thing that I like is, I think this is what's coming out of this show is that the data engineer, this persona is legitly building. They're the key to AI because if AI doesn't have that pipelining built out, and who knows mm. where it goes, it could mm. be uh, AI could build the pipelines, like, yeah. a, mm. like a 3D printer. I remember the first time I saw a 3D printer, I'm like, mm. well, that's magic. Mm. I can mm. imagine AI building pipelines on the fly. Uh, in mm, the future, mm. so um, just the engineering has to get done, and that's, I think, going to be a big part of who's successful with generative AI, because the non-determinate piece is huge. Yeah, yeah. We've actually started to introduce some features into the product <laughs> to allow those data engineers to build those pipelines <laughs> using <laughs> large language models. You actually yeah. see that in the product really? right now. Really, yeah. Okay. It, I mean, again, it's just a ma magic. You know, yeah, but it, it also can build. It can also build the wrong pipelines too. It, you got to be careful. It can. So, and yeah. look, we take a lot of spirit from yeah. that too internally. So, our company, over half our company, is data yeah. engineers, and uh, we really want to, yeah. you know, eat our own dog food, if you yeah. will. So, we've created our own AI and ML algorithms that we're using internally, um, and you know, we stress test those a lot, quite a bit. The one thing, John, to your point, is that governance around yeah. that data to make sure that it's being used the right way, yeah. and we learn a lot from that internally. Internally, as we start to, you know, have our data engineers mm, yeah. create our create applications. I think I think the data engineer is going to be as important, if not more, than say the security person, because we had the same conversation with security. Build security from day one. Yeah. I think you're going to hear that conversation about governance, because you can't scale AI unless the government's actually built in yeah. from day That's one, right. where it's just it's automated into the process, or because how does the data run policy or make decisions on where to go? Yes. In, in real time. Right. Well, I'd say there's like. Two big conversations that we have with our with our customers. One is, can you deliver data and empower our data engineers to do their mm -hmm. job? One, uh, and then two is, what's the security and governance yeah. around that yeah, data? Yeah. And uh, so, to your point, John, I think that is front and center on everybody's mind as well. Guys, great uh, insights. We're unpacking it in real time. The data engineer is going to set the table for AI. Is <laughs> going to be <laughs> the theme of this interview. Um, as we wrap up, last minute we got. Give a quick update on the company, size, scope. 
kind of car target customers you guys hit, that certain profile you're looking to hire? Give a plug for the company. Yeah, so first we're doing phenomenally well, right? So you know we're we're growing uh, we're growing at an accelerated pace. We're about 200 employees. We're a global company. Uh, we have hundreds of customers. Um, those customers are all around the world. Uh, we don't have a specific segment of customer. As long as somebody is using Airflow or has interest in using Airflow, that's a great company for us to talk to. And uh, we are hiring. So anybody that wants to come work for a <laughs> yeah. great company, I could do with a few AI. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I got to ask the question because you mentioned data. Engineers, most of, and a lot of data engineers work there. What's the culture of Astrometer, if you had to put, pin it down? It, every company has their culture. Data engineering, or what well, would you describe? You mentioned that half the company is data engineers. That's a big part of the culture, yeah. is that we do eat our own dog food. We have a data science team that is, of course, built on <laughs> Airflow and on the Astro platform. Um, so it's very much like try it before we sell it and make sure yeah. that it works. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, um, it's a real culture built around that open yeah. source foundation. I mean, you have to have earn the trust. If your persona is building and engineering their future data, they're going to want to use the product, they're going to have confidence, mm -hmm. they're going to have full, full confidence that it's going to work and they got to have a company to support it. So That's congratulations right. yeah. and continued Thanks. success. Great to see you. And congratulations on the CEO taking the helm. Thanks, John, I appreciate company. it. Hey, Having a great time. <laughs> Thank you. On the Cube. All right, more Cube coverage coming. Day three, we'll be right back. Back to the studio. We'll be right back here shortly.